Tonight's film, a dramatization of events in the mysterious life of Marie Hilly, is based on court and police records and personal interviews. I'm not quite sure, Frank, but we're going to make you feel better, aren't we, Marie? We sure are. I think uh, in addition to the K.O. Peck tape, we ought to make sure that Frank continues to eat and drink a lot of fluids. I don't want him getting dehydrated. Well, Carol and I will make sure he does as instructed. You go on home, Frank. Marie, you keep up the TLC. All right. Thanks, Lyle. Come on, honey. Bye now, Lyle. Hi. Hi. How's your dad doing? He's about the same, I guess. He looks real bad. I know. Why, well, hi, Valinda. How y'all doing today? Fine, Miss Hilly. Thank you. Your mom's so neat. You're lucky. She's okay, most of the time. <laughs> Carol, you could have looked a little nicer. Would want a dress or something nice like Belinda. Mom. She's her father's little boy. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to look like one. Miss yes, Hilly. Oh, but there's your grandma girl. Help her into the car. Bye now, Belinda. Bye. Sorry. Thanks, Janelle. Mama fixed her favorite, Daddy. Eat something dry, dear? Darling, I just, I don't, I don't think I can. I know it's good, but. Please, Frank, please, for me. Well, maybe a leap for you. Come on, Daddy. How about a bite for your old buddy here, huh? <laughs> That's it. Good. There's the car. Who took the... Rain? Is it raining? Frank? Where? No, no, I need the key. I need the key. Frank, you don't need the key. Come on, come on. I'm gonna help you. Don't touch me. Daddy. Don't touch me. I can't. Frank, get No, no, no. Come on. Come sit on the porch. Come on. Go. 
I feel so alone with Daddy gone. Well, you are so special to him. Sometimes I envied you, too. You're like two peas in a pod. <laughs> well, your daddy's in heaven now. He's looking down at his baby girl, and he wants you to be strong. We'll come through this together. Our little family. Mama will take care of you. We used to do everything together. God, I miss him. Oh, no. It'll be all right, Aunt. I still can't believe it. It was just so sudden. You seemed fine ten days ago, didn't you, Mama? It just got worse real fast. First, he had these real bad stomach aches, and then his liver stopped working. Where's your Mama? She's just lost. Why do you always do this? So you can see where I came from and appreciate where we're going. Now y'all gonna drive up the hill to where you think you belong. Growing up here didn't stop me from being voted the prettiest girl in Anderson. All Calhoun County, for that matter. I think you should have a boyfriend by now. I had one. He wasn't good enough for you. Oh, Hilly, you can do better than Ronnie Harmon. You can do better than this. When I was your age... You had dozens of boyfriends. Matter of fact, I did. I had my pick and choose. More than a few from up on the hill, too. Why'd you marry Daddy, then? Don't be fresh with me. Your father was a wonderful man. Those times... Y'all didn't just cross, you know? There's always been them and us. And I could speak French, too. Guess we better get going. I think we should find a place to live up near here. Sure, Mom. Well, at least close to here. Maybe at the bottom and slowly work our way up. I'd love to live here. I should live here. That's Mr. Coswell's house. There. He said I was the best executive secretary he ever had. Then why'd you quit? Well, I had a better offer. Went to work for Mr. Gaines. I was in great demand. All these men wanted me to work for them. Most important men in town. All of them. Matter of fact, I have an interview tomorrow. I've heard awfully good things about you. Well, that's awfully nice of you to say. I've always tried to do my very best. Which is very good indeed, from all accounts. Uh, would you have time uh, to help, I mean? Uh, we're undergoing some extensive restructuring of the marketing division, and uh, I understand your organizational skills are impeccable. And, uh, well, perhaps you could... Uh, Sleep on it for a few days or so. Well, Mr. Corkin, I'm truly flattered at your consideration. Really, I'd be quite pleased to help in any way I could. Well, welcome aboard. Well... Uh, you, uh... Do you, uh... Would you like a little, uh... little highball? I always like a little bit around this shade of the day.
Grandma. She's been terrible all night. I feel so helpless. I can't do anything for her. I don't want her to die. I'll take care of things. I will. You go on now. You go on, go to bed. Go on, Karen. Hello? Who is it? Hello? Those phone calls again. They call, breathe into the phone, and hang up. How long has it been happening? Ever since Daddy died. Well, this harassment sure is strange, no doubt about that, Miss Hilly. But I don't see any signs of forced entry or anything. Well, what about the notes and the phone calls? Well, unless we get some hard proof, there's nothing I can do. If you get another note, hold on to it and I'll come get it. In the meantime, we'll just have to keep an eye out. Hopefully the tap on your phone will help us out. Well, we understand completely and are ever so thankful for your concern, Lieutenant. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Don't go in your room, Carol! Carol! Carol, wait! Please, Carol! Don't go in your room! No! Mama, why are they doing this? Carol, we're gonna have to move, my precious baby. But why? They're trying to kill me, I know it. Who, Marie? Who is they? I... I can't. I can't. I have to get Grandma or Dad. Gary. Yes, Les. Can I talk to you a minute? Strange. Now, who would want her to a pretty lady like her? I don't know. Where does she get all the money? We don't have any money. Well, I checked the clothes in her closet. Looks like a movie star's. Well, Mama likes to look nice. Well, you call if anything else happens, okay? Sure. So. She says, why, well, I declare I was simply mortified, like some little West Nashville belle. A cracker trash has practically known the entire First Baptist Men's Revival Choir, in the biblical sense, of course. <laughs> what does she do during the day? Who? Why? Oh, she tends her garden with little gloves with tiny tulips all over them. And, uh, she paints. Paints what? Birds. Badly. I'd have liked that. Oh, 
And where did all the money go, Marie? Frank's life insurance paid you $30,000. Now, as any fine Southern woman, I know you know your Bible. Robbing Peter to pay Paul? I'm afraid we're gonna have to put you on a little monetary diet. Now, I have devised a little plan. We're going to float you a small loan secured on your own good name to cover these bad checks now just until the fire insurance proceeds can be dispersed lord i couldn't live without you you know that you're a lifesaver i don't know how i can ever thank you without furniture, too. It's on the way. I ordered a wonderful living and dining room set for Wilmington. I think that's nice, don't you? Uh-huh. I've never seen snow except for in your paintings. Uh, I've never seen the real thing myself, either. Someday we'll go to the mountains. Wear thick furs. Why, we'll learn to ski. And yodel. yodel hee hoo <laughs> Hell, sometimes I think I'll just get nowhere. Like we were born in this little town with a fence around it five miles high. We gotta stay in it forever. Like me? Is that what you think my life's been about? No, I could have I... done quite well, thank you. Shouldn't it explode? Well, not if we do it right. Not like it hadn't been done by anyone before. We just report it stolen. Huh? Come on, come on. What do you think of that? That was pretty cool, Mama. Mama? Yes? I got asked to the prom. The senior prom? Why, Missy Kale! We sure enough gonna get you all dolled up cuter than a little itty bitty baby blue eyed angel. I do declare we sure enough will. <laughs> this is where my daddy taught me to drive. Can we really afford this car? Carol, I've already explained this to you. That's why we burned the old one. Whatever you say, this is slick. Just up here. Up a little farther, up a little farther. Uh, now stop, stop. Now, the hardest part of your test is parallel. Parallel parking. And we're we'll practice here. Between these monuments to our founding fathers, pillars of our fine little town. <laughs> Won't we get in trouble doing this? Carol, just, just practice parallel, all right? <laughs> well, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right. Personally, I think the color is lovely on her. I wonder if you'll ever fill out, Carol. Curves can be such an advantage. I do kind of like this one, Mama. What about that blue one that girl has on? I'll check and see if we have it in her size. Of course, I think she looks lovely in this one. With alterations, of course. I, I, I do kind of like this one. Don't be ridiculous. Ta-da. Here we are. Perfect. Mama, I Just don't... Just put it on, Karen. Huh? 
Well, I think this will have to do. A new car, Marie? Not a very prudent purchase under the circumstances. I do believe the devil made me do it, Walt. You've closed the account? But, Ward, of course I'll try to make the payments. Yes, I can. Please. The uh, other account is overdrawn, too. <laughs> I don't know how that could possibly have happened. Give me a month, Ward. Please. Please, I promise. Well, that check was just for a little dress. One month, please. Thanks, Ward. Bye. especially if you drink. Mama, I ain't gonna drink. Don't tell me what kids do at proms. I went to five. Youngest girl in Aniston. Three times princess and then queen. They mix it in soda and you just hope they throw off on themselves instead of your pretty little pumps. Are you okay? Are you all right? Carol, what's wrong? Carol, you need some water or something? Are, are you drunk? Come here, wet nurse. Come here. Don't, don't, don't touch me. Please, please, don't. Please. Don't, don't, don't. Good morning, Mrs. Hilly. Uh, I'm Dr. Seldes. I've been supervising Carol's test. It's a pleasure, Dr. Seldes. I know you'll do the best you can. I've heard wonderful things about this place. And where did you go to medical school? Um... Uh, well, uh, Tulane. I, I, w I went to Tulane. It's a wonderful school, son of the South, I'd say. <laughs> and what is your diagnosis? Uh, dehydration, vomiting, chills, fever. Uh, it's a bit mystifying. We can't find a specific cause, Mrs. Hilly. Now, we'll keep her here under observation for a few days. Is that all you can say? Oh, well, I'm sorry. It's, uh... <laughs> It's very difficult to give an exact diagnosis with such diffuse symptoms. Oh, no. Oh, no, you will not keep my baby. I will take her home. I will see to her. I most certainly will. Dr. Sherman, 
I've got your favorite Italian roast beef. Linda, you sure you wouldn't care for something? No, thanks, Miss Ellie. All right. There you go. I'll just leave you girls be. Thanks, Mama. And that's all right, sugar. Something so you don't have to come back to the hospital. Uh, Mom, I don't know, Miss Hilly. I have permission. It's an anti nausea drug, and I have permission so I don't have to keep bringing her back into the ER for this. Now, would you help me hold her? Um, it, it just doesn't seem right. Then I'll do it myself. <laughs> Where are you going? Um, I. Uh, uh, maybe we just should just call 911. You stay right here. You help me hold her legs. gotta go to the hospital. You've gotta do something. Nurse Bob, Rita. Nurse Bob. Rita, what happened? Poor girl, she fell down. Nobody even found her for ten minutes. What do you mean no one found her for ten minutes? Just what I said. She was lying there all by herself. Marie, somebody's got to do something. She can't even walk for him. It's driving me insane. We've been to three doctors. One of them even says it's psychosomatic. Dr. I'm going to get her out of here right away. Dr. Governor, oh. It's going to be okay, sure. Here you go, Ed. I'll get the chair. Okay. What are you doing? Just doing my job. This stuff was bought with a bounce check. Sorry, girly. That was Wellington's furniture. Marie's check to them just bounced. She's accumulating a stack of bad checks about as thick as a deck of cards. Now, why is she doing this, Ward? I don't know. We tried to help her with the finances ever since Frank died. How so? Well, just simple guidance. She was constantly overdrawn at a few other banks. Her accounts closed. So we, we tried to help her. We opened her accounts here based on the fact that she was selling a home of hers down in Florida. Well, is that going to help with all these bad checks? It should. We're looking to open a $30,000 CD. Hmm. Does Wellington's want to press charges? I don't know. I have to call him up. I do know that Marie bought a new car. A new car? Yep. Well, how's that possible? Oh, not through us. Dealer must have financed it. I got something for you, honey. Nurse gave it to me. Said. They don't know what they're doing. 
And maybe, maybe this will help. But don't tell anyone, okay? All the nurse will get in trouble. Doctor asked me if I ever tried to commit suicide. What? When? How they ask a silly question like that? He asked me if I was eating pencilettes. What kind of silliness is this supposed to mean? Suicide? Lead pencils? Well, I've found slightly elevated levels of lead in her blood, and I'm running more tests. You are most certainly not running any more tests. You've had my little girl in here for a week, poking, draining, bleeding. I'm taking her out of here right now. Um, but you can't. She's I can do anything I want. I want her discharged in my care immediately. Arrange for it this instant. I demand it. You cannot keep her. I'm taking her to the UAB, but they might know what they're doing. This incompetence is criminal. I won't have it. Come on, Karen. Give me your arm. It all started after the death of her husband. Threatening phone calls, well, nuisance calls. Phone had ring, nobody on the other end. There is the fires first in the closet. Obvious arson. Some breaking and entering, and then the house fire. We've got a laundry list of slowly accumulating violence here. It's bizarre. You mean to tell me that she's emptied three bank accounts, is now writing checks on a non-existent account, and is into two banks for thousands. Yeah. Ward Bellamy opened an account for her based on the sale of a house that doesn't exist. <laughs> I don't believe this woman. She's got a job, gets a dead husband, Social Security, and has gone through 30,000 life insurance in less than a year. The only monthly payment she's made good on yeah? Is her daughter's life insurance policy. Audrey Marie Hilly? Why, Gary, you know why. You're under arrest. For what? A lot of bad checks, Marie. I can't tell you how disappointed I am about this. You have a right to remain silent? Don't leave me, Mama. I'm afraid. I want to go home to the... Uh, what do y'all got here? Partial paralysis, blindness, neurological decomposition, gastrointestinal chaos. Oh, wait a minute. Here, yeah, look at her hands. I don't believe it. I... I just read about this. These striations, these lines through the nails. This is something if you're not looking for, it's hard to find. So what does it mean? Honey, honey, can you hear me? Either you did this to yourself. Someone's trying to kill you. Uh, look, get a hair sample. This kid is full of arsenic. Arsenic? No, thanks. I'll get back to you. You have to trust me, Carol. We go before the grand jury tomorrow. I know she's your mother, but without you, I have nothing. You had 100 times the normal level of arsenic in your body. And those shots, they weren't anti-nausea. I, I just can't, Mr. Hubbard. She's my mother. I can't explain it. I just... Without you...
she set those fires. She's the one's been calling you. She did all of this deliberately. I mean, f forget the bad checks. Forget the arson. Forget these tormenting phone calls she's made to you. She murdered your own daddy, girl. And one more dose and she would have murdered you. You are now the only living witness. This isn't a bad check charge I'm after. You have to help. <laughs> She's my mama! <laughs> Do you think my mama's crazy? What do you think? I wish she was. Carol, your mama knows exactly what she's doing. He was all premeditated. Indictments on every count. Uh, come on. The grand jury has chosen to indict on uh, bad checks, murder, first degree, on, on your daddy, and uh, an attempt to poison on you. What's gonna happen to me? When I see this information, Joe has to be, uh, excuse me, what? Fowler just got her off on $14,000 bond. $14,000? Well, Miss Marie called in her markers from all over town. There's some big ones. Where is she? Fowler said he wanted to keep the press off her. He's got her checked into a motel in Birmingham. Birmingham? You led me straight to her. You will hear from me. Oh, I see. Been kidnapped. Yeah, right. My God, Carol. We gotta get back up to Aniston. Oh, come on. safe with my family. She can't spend her life in fear and hiding. There's no way to live. I'll be all right. I'll stay with Aunt Frida. All right. I'll post a watch on you then. We're going to get her, Carol. If it's the last thing I do, she's going to be done hurting people. I'm going to get her. Robbie Hannon, double N. That's right. Well, this is a very impressive resume, Robbie. I think we'll be able to place you in a New York manner. Oh, just in time, too. Either that or find myself a little old sugar daddy. <laughs> well, there's more than a few of those around, if you don't mind. I'm a little on the well done side. Where are you staying now? A uh, hotel just off the beach, the Florida Breeze. Well, you check this lead out, see if you like it. And I'll meet you over at the Sand and Sea around five-ish. Uh, for a cocktail, we'll show you around a bit. It's a deal. 
This is the hot spot in town. A lot of the rich guys from the marina come in here all the time. Not bad, huh? Now, some of these guys are married, but uh, a lot of them aren't. What about him? John Homan. Rumor has it he's for money. But if he's got it, he doesn't flash it. He likes to get his hands dirty. Works on boats. I like a man who can work with his hands. Oh, well, now that all depends on where he puts them. <laughs> How much money? Nothing that I'd quit my day job for. He's really a blue-collar kind of guy. I've talked to him maybe once or twice. Yeah. Kind of like his looks. That's really one of the most interesting things I've ever heard. Of. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking this much. I don't usually at all. I, you make me feel so comfortable. Feel the same. Huh. Well, who, uh, who is this person you miss very much? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm sorry. Take it easy. The way I'm acting. Well, tell me. <laughs> tell me if you want. children were killed in an automobile accident a year ago in Texas. I've been sort of lost, adrift ever since. <sighs> My marriage failed. Oh, it's hard. She has left me. I'm not real close with my family. I'm, I'm pretty much of a disappointment to them. Huh? I'm sorry. I like to work with my hands. Yeah. I think that's a decent and honest thing for a man to do. Why would any woman in her right mind leave a man like you? Can I? <laughs> Can I see you again? Yes. I like that. Yes. We wrap all these and one of these tight. John. John. Hi, hi. I gotta go. Tighten all the rest of these, and you check those belts. I tell you, that main squeeze yours got you on a tight leash, don't you? <laughs> what is something like that seeing something like me? Oh, Hi. oh, you look wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you really think so? Just, just do it. Start life over. Throw yeah. away all that old baggage and clutter. Just, just change. You think we could? As far from here as. I want snow. Snow? <laughs> snow? I want snow. I have some friends in New Hampshire. Uh, Walt and Maggie. They're really nice people. I could call them, ask them if they could find us a place to live. Yeah. You'd have snow, and if... If winter doesn't come, I'll buy you snow. All the snow you want, hell, anything you want. I want it. Yeah, I want it. I want snow for snowball fights and cozy fires. Robbie. John. Robbie, will you marry me? Don't be afraid of change, dear. I've ordered new furniture. These shades just don't do. Everything's fine. I like everything just the way it is. I'm thinking of something peachy. Now, what do you think, Maggie? I've always been partial to peach myself. How much all this going to cost? Money? Cost? That was bothering you? 
No. No, no, I mean, money doesn't mean anything to me, never has, never will. I'll just get a job then. You know, Robbie, there's a job open where I work at Central Screw. They've been awfully good to Maggie over the years. You gals could have fun. You don't need to get a job. We got plenty of money. I'm... You don't want me barefoot and pregnant, do you? <laughs> well, Walt, you don't want Maggie barefoot and pregnant. Yes, sir. Let's get myself a job. You think you're going to keep me under your thumb? I am so excited, Maggie. Well, you should fit right in. We have a nice group here. There's been a lot here, a lot to death. You know, I've been so many places, blessed as I was. My first husband, uh, a lawyer, was quite wealthy. He... I had an automobile wreck with my two children. I'm sorry. I still have the condo in Aspen, but I doubt I'll ever see Paris again. Oh, that's too bad. It's John's godsend. Idle hands, the devil's mischief will do. Yes, that's true. Well, all I need now is for you to fill in this W-4 form. Name, address, and social security number, okay? Oh, yes, of course. You can bring it back later if you like. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Sister Terry, she'll keep the condo we have in Aspen. If that inheritance ever comes through, I swear those Texans act like it's theirs instead of mine and Terry's. Robbie! Telephone. It's me. Back. God, I'm sick of that woman's trials and tribulations. I think she's sweet. She's just, you know, had some trouble, Maggie. Hello? Well, hi. I was expecting you to call. I think she is trouble. Lived her life for over a year now. Hers and that lapdog husband of hers. Well, I love you, too. That's him on the phone now. Hi, honey. Just call to say I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like her. Oh. Robbie. That social security number of yours, something's wrong. The computer seems to kick it out and payroll is having some problems. Could you call them? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, 
just can't believe how much weight I put on. Well, a happy marriage does that to you. <laughs> Rhonda, I feel somehow that you are a trustful, decent human being. And I've never told anyone this, but somehow I feel I need to share with you. I have an incurable blood disease. I've known for some time. It's progressive. Oh. Robbie. I'm so sorry. The doctors in Boston recommend a specialist in Dallas. Great. Then we'll go. No, Pack, no, we'll go. no. I'll go alone. I've talked to Terry in Dallas and she can take care of me. It's better this way. I'd like if you'd take care of the house. Mm -hmm. oh. Your husband. I want to be with you. I want to be there for whatever... I've had so much grief and tragedy in my life. Should anything happen, I want to spare us both the maudlin, painful motions we feel we'd have to go through. And just remember the best things, John. You should not be going through this by yourself. Have faith. Terry will take good care of me. We'll call every day. Oh, I can't shake the feeling that I'm never going to see you again. God works in many ways. Things always work out for the best. My heart and my thoughts will be with you. I love you. Yes, Terry. It's over. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, no. She went quietly and easily. It was her hope that you and I meet to console one another in our grief. Whatever, whatever she wanted. Yep. Whatever. Well, I'll fly in day after tomorrow. She sent her love. I'll bring it to you. Joan, I want you to know she was very brave. And she loved you very much, and I can see why. You give off the aura of a very kind man. Mm. Mm. Non-smoking flight. It's Robbie's brand. But I smoked twice as many of them. It's been a harrowing ordeal. You, uh, you have any luggage? Fit. She wanted me to remember her to everyone at work. It's beautiful up here. I've never been to New England before. I feel so, so homey. I wonder if she liked it. She loves the snow. Burr. <laughs> Not me. Don't 
died after a long illness. Dallas, member of Sacred Heart Church in Tyler, born in Buffalo, New York, daughter of Hugh and Cindy Grayson, formerly employed by Central Screw Company in Keene. Survivors include John and two sisters, Jean and Trevor of White Plains, New York, and Terry Martin of Dallas. No funeral. Requested her body be donated to the Medical Research Institute of Texas. She told me so much of all of you. She wanted me to come and remember herself to you. Who's Rhonda? Hi. And you? Maggie. It's Maggie, Robbie, and you know it. Terry. I'm a twin sister, Terry. If I've been called Robbie once, I've been called it a zillion times. You were her dearest, closest friend. Well, I'd like to stay a while and talk to you about her when I can, but uh, my main concern now is John. Not any Terry Martin. That's Robbie. What are you talking about? Robbie's dead. You're crazy. What is that woman up to? What's he up to? How could he be that stupid? Maggie, she's an identical twin. I saw a show once on twins and you couldn't tell the That's Robbie. I know it is. Let me see that obituary again. Fine. doing this. Do you hear me? <laughs> I like to watch you eat. Um, John, um, this is going to be very hard for me. But somehow I think Robbie would want it this way. Um, I've um, fallen in love with this little village. The people. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't feel it. feel a strong attraction to you. There. Hope you don't think ill of me. It's just... Oh, I don't know. We have so much in common. Maybe. Maybe for just a little while. Seems so right. You know? I mean, it's as if Robbie came back to life in you. I can feel the spirit flowing in me. Out to you. I can't help it.
Can I ask you a question? Of course. Kelly, I don't know. It's kind of naughty. different from anybody I've ever been with before. Well, thank you. <laughs> She's what? She stayed and got a job in Rattleboro? Where is she now? Uh, she's at John's. I just saw her at lunch. Hello, Terry. It's Maggie. I'm fine. How are you? Well, I called... Well, we girls, we'd like to send our condolences to your sister. You know, Jean Ann? Oh, it's, it's no problem. What's her address? Well, I, I think she just moved. Well, I'll have to call her to find out. We, you really need to concern yourself. We are dear. Bye. Damn. Rhonda. Yeah. Well, I've been on the phone and you all thought I was nuts. I've written it all down. Read it. Does that satisfy you? There is no medical research institute. There is no sacred heart church in Tyler, Texas. What? And there is no Jean and Trevor in White Plains, New York. And there is no record of death in and about Dallas, Texas. Free one Robbie Holman. Tom Blakely from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We have reason to believe that you are somebody other than who you say you are. <sighs> I can understand that. Uh, would you accompany us to police headquarters, please? Of course. Just right around this way to the blue car, please. Who are you? Audrey Marie Haley. And are you running or hiding from something that we should know about, Miss Lee? Nothing much. A little tech charge. Where was that? Alabama. <laughs> You've run a long way for a little bad paper, Miss Hilly. Well, it's ridiculous what they accuse me of. Do you know how hard it is to hide? Every few months you have to quit every job you have because your phony social security number kicks back. What did you do, Miss Hilly? It's ridiculous. I was her own mother. I mean, it's absurd. What's absurd? You know how hard it is to run? To hide? It's very tiring. I'm glad it's over. Well, it's not, Miss Hilly. Try murder one and attempt to poison. Lady, you're Alabama bound. I'd really rather not go back there. Step into the car, Miss Hilly. So, why'd you play me for a fool, Terry? 
Robbie Marie. John, my real name is Audrey Marie Healy. I didn't I play you for a fool. I believe this. Did you... Did you do those things they say you did? Marie? Of course I didn't do those things. It's all nonsense. It's a conspiracy. My in-laws and the police. I had a little problem with money, but I certainly didn't kill anyone. Why? Why didn't you trust me enough to tell me? Tell me the truth. I wanted to protect you. To save what we had. I did it because I... Could have helped, could have helped you. I was afraid of losing you. Your decent, kind, loving husband. And I'm all alone except for you. All alone in this world. No, you're not. all the charges. Oh, Mrs. Hilly, if you're not guilty, who do you think committed the murder? No comment. Mr. Fowler, why don't you ask for a change of venue? Come on, gentlemen. How about motions? You're going to file any more motions? Call your first witness, Mr. Hubbard. <laughs> Prosecution calls Carol Hilly. <laughs> When you first became ill, what were your symptoms? Just throwing up. Just throwing up. How often would you throw up? Hours and hours. It would stop and then it would go on forever, for weeks. Did your mother give you injections at any time? Yes. Uh, uh, my mom said she gotten something to make the nausea go away. Did it? No, sir. Did, at any time, anyone suggest that your symptoms might be psychological? Yes, I was put in a psychiatric ward. Did your mother give you injections there? Yes, sir. I just wanted to go home, but the doctors kept telling me it was in my head and I couldn't go home until I could walk or gained 15 or 20 pounds. It didn't look good. So, my mom said, one time there was this little girl who had the same problem, and a nurse gave her a shot, and it helped this little girl. Mama said it would help my legs. <laughs> and your mother told you not to tell anybody? Yes, sir. Did you find relief? I was just getting worse. Then they told me my mother couldn't see me anymore. And then your mother took you out of that hospital. How did you get around? Well, my mother, she would just sort of drag me. I wanted to go home. Just go home and die. But you didn't go home. 
Where did you go? UAB. When was the first time you were told what was wrong with you? At UAB. It was arsenic poisoning. How long were you in physical therapy because of arsenic poisoning? Ten months. I couldn't walk. My hands were numb. I couldn't dress myself. I just kept trying. Did you ever experience nausea or vomiting when your mother gave you food? All the time that summer, day after day, week after week. Carol, I want you to try and think back to April 1970. <laughs> Would you like to take a little break? We, we, can, uh, we can take a recess or we can just stop for a minute. Which would you rather? A break. Prosecution requests a short recess, Your Honor. I think that's fine, Counselor. Court will recess for 15 minutes. If Marie Hilly had intended to kill her daughter, she would have taken the girl home and let her die. Not taken her to hospital after hospital and doctor after doctor. The girl is suicidal, as we have shown. And if money was a so-called motive, Mrs. Hilly would have bought a much larger policy. Wouldn't you think? <laughs> it was a concerned wife and mother who took first her husband, then later her daughter to the hospital when they became ill, who unhesitatingly consented to an autopsy. I ask you to do your duty and find the defendant not guilty. Thank you. <coughs> Carol Hilly loves her mother. God made that bond. Carol did not break that bond. Marie Hilly broke that bond when she took it into her own hands to dispose of the child that she bore for money. She's not your ordinary housewife. Looks like one. Active like one. But that's not what she really is. What she really is is a cold-blooded Murderous. Of course she agreed to an autopsy of Frank Hilly. Unless you look specifically for it, you won't find arsenic poisoning. It mimics hundreds of things. She knew this, and she murdered this fine man for $31,000. And having gone through this money in short order, she attempted the same thing again with the daughter that she brought into this world for $25,000. One more dose, and Carol Hilly would have been in the ground right next to her dear dead daddy. This crime is nearly unspeakable. Look at her. Look at her. She is not your ordinary mother. She is a cold, calculating, cunning killer. Thank you. That concludes the final argument, so we'll take a short recess, after which I will instruct the jury as to the appropriate law for this case. Then you may retire to deliberate on your verdict. Carol, 
I love you. Leave her alone, Marie. Come see me. <laughs> and having been found guilty on all counts of murder in the first degree and of attempted poisoning, I hereby sentence you to life and 20 years imprisonment at the Julia Tutwiler State Prison for Women in Wetumpka. This court is now adjourned. Look a mess. I should do something with it. They've been taking pictures and all. How could you have done this to me? Done what? I'm your daughter. Don't you have anything to say? I couldn't call you. You must know why. It's untrue. Now, calm down, Marie. The report may be of no merit, and if that's so, it won't affect your request for a three-day furlough. But I, I've never talked to anyone regarding escape. I've done everything asked of me in the last three years. Marie, your executive skills, your leadership, your artwork are an inspiration to us all. I don't all. want your admiration. I want your trust. I am so disappointed that you would think that I would even think of escaping. All right. Now calm down, okay? I'll look into the report and I'll see what I can do, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Warden. Exactly a four star hotel, is it? You're here, I'm here. It's all that matters, John. Morning. Morning, Marie. What are you doing? Well, I don't, I don't want to wake you. See, the truth is, I've been laid off. I had to return the rental car this morning. I'm going to gonna take you back on this. You can't be serious.
Wait, Marie? 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Marie. There's nothing I can do. There's no... I'm hungry. Try. I'll just run out and get whatever you want. Whatever. Be there then. I'll meet you when I can. What'd you get? Biscuits and gravy. Who's that? On the phone. Dodie. 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 Just what I said. She wants to visit my parents' graves with me. Well, I can take you. I have to do this alone. I'll be back. No, Marie. 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 Gary Carroll, please. Thank you, John. I got Birmingham Airport on the all the bus depots and Amtrak. The last time she stole a car. Yeah, I got her description out on the radio. Right. I'll call Carroll. Can we get a car up there to watch her? Sure thing. All right. You were going to take her back 100 miles on a motorcycle in this weather. Had a raincoat for her. Who is Dodie? Don't know. You bet you don't. There isn't any Dodie. How much money did she have? That I know. Three bucks. So she's gone. Vanished. A spider through a crack in the floor. How long is she going to be gone this time, John? Well, you seem to know her. If that woman could ever be known. Well, listen, Holman said she went to visit her parents' graves with Dodie. Dodie? Yes, Dodie. Who is she? I don't know. Mama didn't know anybody named Dodie. Carol, think. Think real hard. There's got to be somebody that we have overlooked. I told you, I don't know. Don't you understand? I don't know anything about my mother. Cardiac 
Arrest due to acute hypothermia. Excuse me, gentlemen. I don't figure it. Hmm. A woman who never spent five minutes in the woods her entire life. She must have been waiting for somebody and he didn't show up. She could have been long gone. It's ironic, Gary. What is? She spent a whole life trying to get away from here. And she crawls back to the very shack she was born in to die. Marie Healy's death and her three days in the woods remain a mystery to this day. In 1989, John Holman was murdered in a bizarre robbery attempt at the old hotel in Aniston, Alabama, where he remained after the death of his beloved Marie. Carol Healy survives.